All right, welcome back to Serve, presented by Chase. The men's draw looking uh when we are going in at the draw show, the only real uncertainty as far as who the best players were on the surface, how it might shake out, uh, was largely Novak's knee, right? That dictated the uncertainty when trying to make a prediction. Uh, you called Alcaraz winning the tournament. I called Novak making final, even when we didn't know if he was going to play in the in the event. So you were right. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner for JW. Uh, as we look backwards, uh, just talk through kind of the journey of this tournament from, you know, I, I don't want to say that the, the, the intrigue around where Novak actually was, he went from, was he going to play to, is he going to win his eighth Wimbledon, uh, in a very, very short amount of time, obviously, uh, about Murray Alcaraz, uh, getting a scare from Francis Tiafo along the way, uh, Medvedev proving that he can beat anyone on a given day again, but is he just, not as physically gifted as as the people that he is trying uh, to beat. And then Novak doing Novak type things, basically with zero training coming in and making uh, a Wimbledon final. How was the men's draw as you saw it? Uh, all of this, in hindsight, is a lot easier to do than when we sat here, uh, you know, 17 days ago when the draw came out and we tried to play forecaster. Um, in some ways, I think this really was Carlos's tournament. And... Despite his seeding, he was a defending champion. He came in with the buzz from, from the clay. And there were times where he absolutely electrified the crowd. And it was just, you know, his, his level was up here. And other times his level dropped and the fact that he could recover. He lost two sets to Francis. I mean, Francis really had this guy on the ropes. He lost a set in the fourth round, a set in the quarters, a set in the semis. Then he comes out for the final against Novak. And that was just, I'll, I'll tell you, just I, I haven't heard your recap yet because it was just prior to this. but. For all the shot making and all the sort of just he did not just do that kind of reactions from the crowd. I just thought the, the fact that he squandered three match points in a Wimbledon final against statistically the greatest player of all time and basically was like, oh, that sucks. I'll have to win him in a tie break. The fact that he reset in 20 minutes for what could have been an absolute catastrophic missed opportunity serving on grass and you let a 40 love lead go out the door. And the fact that 20 minutes later, he's holding up the trophy, I just think that was, to me, more impressive than any run around the net forehand or any drop shot from two feet behind the baseline. I, I just thought that was really a statement. Um, I think there are a lot of players that sort of had B-plus tournaments that sort of had had good progress. You know, Ben Shelton really struggled on the grass. He won a bunch of five setters. He got to middle weekend. He didn't play to his, you know, he, he, he didn't do what he did at the U.S. Open. He didn't really announce himself, but... You know, good good tournament on grass. You know, Francis was in a real slump. Taking two sets of Alcaraz in retrospect, talk about a loss that ages well. Um, he played Carlos Alcaraz closer than anyone else in the draw. Good for Francis. Again, didn't get out of the third round, though. Taylor Fritz had a real signature win of his career. Came back two sets to love against Zvera. That is a big-time win, regardless of surface. But then Taylor Fritz took a bit of a step back and, and lost a very winnable match against Musetti. So I, I think there were a lot of sort of, I can come out of here with some positives, but nobody's really doing too many cartwheels apart from Carlos Alcaraz, who I think really made a statement. I mean, this was his fourth major. It wasn't like who who is a Spanish kid hitting the hell out of the ball. But I just think the fact that he could reset, the fact that he was always smiling and having joy, even while his level was dropping. I mean, there was one point at which he, he was broken three times in one set and he goes to sit down and his attitude isn't one of mortal fear or, uh, you know, abject panic, but of like, boy, I was sure shit for those 30 minutes. I'll have to get better. Um, I, I think this was a real statement tournament for him. Again, again, uh, just you, you sort of go down the draw and there were very few players who just bombed out without any sort of, you know, it, it's everyone gets a trophy era. Um, a lot of moral victories along the way. Hey, Daniil Medvedev beat Sinner. That's a nice win. If you're Yannick Sinner, you say, you know what? I, I didn't win a major, but I, I played pretty well. And I fought through a match when I was hurt, got to the, uh, you know, got, got to the quarters. That ain't bad. So I, I, I think for most players, there's sort of this, how positive am I going to let myself get? How am I going to spin this? Um but boy, I, I just think Carlos was just in, in so many levels and so many dimensions and so many ways from playing out of the doldrums during matches to that performance in the final, which was just dazzling. Uh, I think 
he he is our big winner in more ways than one. Yeah, and the thing that that I love watching is when you watch Carlos, especially when he was. I remember watching that U.S. Open match against Tsitsipas when he just like was all just raw aggression and ability and upset him for the first time. Uh, I think it was three or four years ago. Um, hitting forehands at 100 miles an hour, you're going, oh my gosh, this kid's just the the, the raw parts of him were always extremely obvious, right? There's the, 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 the most obvious parts aren't the subtleties, right? Of like a Novak and how he is a tactician. Novak's like a wrestler. He gets you into certain holds and you can't get out. And it's not like this Tyson fight, right? And so watching Carlos improve, even from last year, right, is something that is just blowing, blowing my mind. I mean, you talk about uh, the confidence is that that's earned, not given, that he can smile away uh, a bad set. I get jealous when I hear that because I didn't have that confidence in my own options or abilities ever in my entire life. I'm like, oh my God, I might never win a set again. Uh, but Carlos Alcaraz, the serve today in the, or in the Wimbledon final, I think it was the best I've ever seen Carlos Alcaraz serve from an execution standpoint and from a mentality standpoint right strategically wasn't hitting random like 97 mile an hour serves that he calls mix-ups that just weren't he went and knew he had to he had the the the, the mentality to go out and win points on his serve today and and he did and you know said in the preview show if he got close to 60 percent first serve percentage he was going to win um he clocked in at 50 59 percent won 84 percent of his first serve points against the Best returner, against Novak, yeah, against geez. the best returner of all time, defended his second serve above a fifty percent clip on against Novak on grass. That is phenomenal. Uh, the way that he's rounded out the bottom of his service motion, I'm sure they haven't or won't talk. They haven't talked about it. It's obvious from where I said it used to be kind of straight up and down. It looked more like a V. This, the bottom is like more rounded out. The shoulder gets around. Therefore, he's able to get a little bit more uh, movement or tail. So, example being. If he's hitting T on the ad side, a slice serve, it's turning a little left by the time it gets to Novak, right? It's turning a little left where the up and down motion means that he was serving straight on. He could still hit his spot, but it wasn't moving. and didn't have that Sampras swing at the end of it. This, this rounded out service motion, it's not a coincidence that when he was hitting his spots, it wasn't getting firmed up today. That's not like an accident. That's not because Novak had knee surgery. That's because he has added something to his serve uh, even since the beginning of the year in January, when Zverev was squaring up every single return uh, in Australia, go ahead, John. Did Did you see Book of Mormon by any yes. chance? Yes. So I'm, I'm thinking, what your, your your breakout here? I'm thinking, like, remember way back in 2023? <laughs> you're, it's like you're describing a completely different yeah. player. I mean, this is not the conversation that we had a year ago today. When oh yeah, he won the title. Um, the way he is, it's, I mean, I don't know what the, now the, the vat of grapes that has turned to wine sure did not take, uh, sure did not take a long time. I mean, this is a completely alien conversation to what we would have said a year ago here, the way he has matured tactically and logistically. It's, it's really extraordinary to watch. Yeah. Another, another thing that he wasn't doing two years ago, even is, and we talked about this quickly in the, uh, the, the, the recap show, but for those who didn't see it, there were eight or nine times today where he got caught looking back in on a return. Novak went forehand and he chipped the ball down, got neutral to stay alive in a rally. Grinds out four or five of those points. That didn't exist really two years ago. It was feast or famine, right? The nuances of basically reading the game better and then in the moments where you don't, reacting better to give yourself a chance. Like if you're giving yourself a look three, four, five more times, when you get beat strategically or you don't read a serve correctly per set, that's the difference between a straight set win and a five set epic. And that's something that Novak has mastered over the years. He reads it better, but then he adjusts better. When he's looking fastball and someone throws a changeup, he still gets a single, right? That is what Carlos Alcaraz is learning and that we're seeing in real time. It's not that Novak, oh, well, he just missed balls. No, he had to play like 20% more. That has a cumulative effect on a match. Obviously, uh, also during the recap show, I talked about, you know, people are like, oh, maybe his knee wasn't good today. Listen, Novak came out 
and was aggressive. Did not want extended rallies with this guy. He was going line early. He was serving volleying like we had talked about uh, yesterday. But we also discussed in our preview, JW, moving comfortably on a knee, right, where you can kind of feel, predict the pacing, where the shots are going to go. You're playing at deep cross court. You know that your opponent doesn't have the ability to, one, hit a drop shot in any place, and two, hit a deep winner to any spot, right? That's a different level of stress test, not on the knee as an injury, but on a fitness level coming in. Novak had no reps, no fitness. All he was trying to do was get healthy enough to play his first round. And then after that, healthy enough to play second round, so on and so forth. So for people to say, oh, he wasn't moving great. Well, no kidding. You have to practice to be great at something. And through no fault of his own, he didn't have those quick, quick reps. And when you get to the top level of the game, those little things, those margins, those three or four percent, I'm moving five percent worse than I normally do because of my fitness level or because of no reps, those get exposed quickly. I think that's what happened today. I think, you know, people saying, well, Novak was too aggressive. He missed too much. He knows more than you. He knows more than me. Uh, he knows whether or not he has the movement to go toe to toe in extended rallies with Alcaraz. Uh, my gut, based on his his strategy coming forward, going line early, was that he didn't have confidence making those quick adjustments. And, you know, Carlos uh, exposed him. Went big when he had to, hit those drop shots when he had to, uh, took second serves early, uh, you know, crush and rush over and over. Did not want Novak to get settled. And then when Novak had a shot because he was unsettled, uh, maybe pull the trigger uh, a little bit too quickly. But props to, to Alcaraz. It's an absolute... It's absurd that Novak was able to make the final of the of this event. Surgery, no fitness, not a lot of tennis, no matches. Finals of Wimbledon. Give yourself a look at the basket. So props to uh, to him as well. Sinner's interesting case moving forward. He's number one in the world, but does he feel like it right now? He would probably tell you that he's not the best player in the world right now. Alpha of two straight majors. Uh, from Carlos Alcaraz, I don't think anyone would say that. Um, you know, he's getting credit for you know post September through March which he should. That's the way it works. But there is a race for world number one uh, in the year-end world number one, and Alcaraz has firmly planted uh, himself right in it. I'd look for Sinner to get back out there uh, sooner rather than later. Um, Medvedev is is an interesting case, and I, I kind of relate to his situation probably more than most. Um, you know, he, he's, he's a former number one. He is a U.S. Open champion, and he can beat people in majors on a given day, it's hard to beat three greats in a row. It's just a huge ask. Yeah. Uh, ex I mean, that's, that's part of this too, right? Part of this is just, uh, this is just a probability exercise and look at Medvedev's draw. And it would have been extraordinary for him to have done much more than he had to. Uh, Medvedev and grass, it's getting better. It's still, there are times where you know, so sometimes he looks great. Other times he looks a, li a little bit clueless. I also think let's table this for another conversation and not do it on a Wimbledon recap. But I have a friend who had zero dog in this fight, not even a big tennis fan. No reason to lie. Who swears that Medvedev used the F word and not the Russian epithet he claims to have used uh, that was sitting courtside and heard this. Um, I do Which, think well, there's yeah. a, there's yeah, a be, discussion be to be had about. Because, yeah, I, said, I did this the other day. Yeah, because he said F you, F you, F you, piece of shit. No, he didn't, though. He said a Russian yeah. epithet that you didn't mm. understand because you and I don't speak Russian. Um, yeah. You know what? You, here, 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 here to, this is only for YouTube viewers. It's going to be awkwardly silent for the next 12 seconds. I'm going to move my mouth the way he moved his mouth for that uh, Russian epithet. You ready? <laughs> so that that's the way that that's the way. Apparently, your mouth you moves. Are doing Duolingo Russian? And, when, and, when did you learn so much Russian, a, dude? Apparently, <laughs> your mouth moves the exact same way for the Russian epithet as it does when you say F you, F you, F you, piece of shit. So you learned something new. Maybe that's the takeaway from the last two weeks. Who knows? Um, hey, we, so sometime on a slow week in like October, we'll talk about whether rules ought to be uniformly applied or whether we like the fact that there's discretion and we don't have someone defaulted uh, in the semifinals of Wimbledon. But if, uh, yeah, I mean, go read his press conference. He said something very different from what this source of mine heard. But uh, I, I don't, he, he's such a good guy. I mean, I, I'm willing, I, I feel like reputations at some point accumulate. And Matt, anyway, let's, let's table that for now. But uh, this could have been, but point being too, 
this could have ended really badly for him. If, if he said what people like yourself and my friend uh, believe he said, this could have been a real controversy. But as it is, uh, he did not surmount Carlos Alcaraz. But that, again, no, no one else did either. Yeah, I, I like Medvedev. I like all of his antics. Uh, I'm here for it. And also, bro, yeah. you, I, we yeah, know what you said. Exactly. Uh, exactly. We need to spend a second uh, and, and congratulate uh, Lorenzo Musetti. Um, coming into the grass court season, I don't know that I had him making finals of Queens and semis of Wimbledon uh, on my bingo card. So props to him for figuring out the grass. It's nice to see people kind of figure out a surface uh, in, in real time. Curious to see if that kind of launches him into this. He, he's a guy that's been around for a long time, super flashy, super talented. Sustain he's younger than Sinner. I know, but sustained. Yeah, I know he's been, it feels like he's been around forever. <laughs> um, but like sustained quality control is something that we will look for with him. Let's see if, if he can build on this. Uh, quickly, someone who I, I, I think doesn't fit into the thing of like, oh, everyone did pretty well. I think Tommy Paul kind of announced himself this month, winning Queens quarterfinals against Alcaraz, playing a tough four setter, uh, going toe to toe with him for the first two sets. Uh, Tommy Paul feels better about his game. Then he did a month ago, and then he did a month before that, a month before that, and a month before that. Uh, a real player, real contender in these tournaments now. We hope uh, Taylor Fritz uh, gets better. That knee injury at the end of the Musetti match, which he was going to already lose. He was down, you know, way down uh, in the fifth set. We hope he gets healthier. Ben Shelton should be licking his chops for the American summer hardcourt season. His second serve is something that nobody wants to see starting off his summer campaign uh, in Atlanta, as well as Francis Tiafo. Francis Tiafo turned his the, a year of form around in, in this event. So we're talking about people that, okay, Francis making the third round of a major. We've seen it before, but he played 300 times better. Slight exaggeration only. Uh, this tournament and kind of found his way, got through a tough first rounder, played a good second rounder, and then gave the best player in the world hell for for four hours on center court and maybe could have been unlucky to to, to not get the win. So props to Foe. I hope he keeps uh, bringing the heat uh, to round up the uh, the American side well, of the men. Uh, let me yeah, please. jump in real quick with Fro. Uh, there we, with Foe. There might be a... Uh... I got to be a little careful here. There may be a coaching announcement coming. Um, we'll, we'll see. If I'm his new coach, the first thing I say is watch this match against Carlos Alcaraz. Look how close you came. Look how many opportunities you gave yourself. Look how you were not, not, not only sort of you, you were a comparable athlete, but you could hang with him in the rallies. You were the better player for certainly chronologically for the better half of that match. Um, this is what you need to do week in, week out. It's great to do it against uh, Carlos Alcaraz on a big court with a big chance of an upset. How do we somehow channel all of that and have that come out on a Tuesday in Cincinnati? And I think that uh, Carlos, I mean, you know, for Francis at a point in his career where y you just can't play the way he's been playing. I mean, he used the word clowns and it made for a couple of days worth of headlines. But I think the larger point there is You've got to figure out a way to replicate the intensity and the level you had against Carlos. You know, you only get a few of those swings. You've got to figure out how to do that week in, week out. And I think if I'm Francis's new coach, uh, I'm making him watch that Carlos match and then making him watch a match where he loses to his his word, a clown on a Tuesday and say, how do we reconcile these two? What do you think? Yeah, who's his new coach? Uh, I'm. Oh. Not at liberty to say, but I it, thought it, you were. Be, I, thought, I, was, be, uh, I was trying to go for. I was, I, I was trying to go for word vomit there. I thought I was going to win. Um, I actually, kind, I, actually, I actually kind of disagree. I don't think. I, I think yes, we need to see that level more often. Um, the way I would present it to to Francis is, we need the work to be so consistent that the real victory was you playing terribly in the first round and finding a way to get through to give yourself a chance to play better. Round two, you played well, and then all of a sudden, round three, you felt like it was riding a bike again, right? You find the flow. How do we get through more round ones when you eke out a five-set win? Uh, you know, How do you play, get the victories from the times where you're not feeling perfect, where you're not in the flow, where you don't have 15,000 people watching you? He likes that show. He likes that atmosphere. He likes to do it. I would actually say the celebration and the one we need to see more of isn't the top level of your tennis. We've seen that. You've proven that when everything is in flow and you have, you know, the, the you're part of the attention center. I'm not worried about you delivering then. 
let's get through the ugly matches to give you more shots at that energy center is the way that I would kind of approach that 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 conversation uh, with Big Foe. Uh, Seb Korda, I love him on grass, and he he draws you know the Evo Karlovic situation where you can play badly and beat Evo Karlovic, you can play well and lose to Evo Karlovic just based on him holding serve. Uh, lucky loser, Paracar draw from hell goes down in a tough uh, five setter, but hopefully. From Sebi Korda, the eye test is like you're a top 10, top 15 guy. Uh, and I hope uh, we get there. He certainly, I, I'm sure, is looking forward to the the summer on the heels of a little bit of disappointment coming off of Wimbledon. But all hail King Carlos, man. Like, this kid has all of it. He's the attitude. He has, you know, the the electric body that can move faster than maybe anyone we've seen this side of prime Hewitt. It's he has the variety. He can simultaneously bludgeon the ball and then hit a poetic half volley flighted winner drop shot, you know, two points later, um, has a smile on his face. Somehow, uh, it's a very offensive to the people, uh, like, like myself that played in kind of a miserable state, stressed out state most of the time. The fact that he's always having fun is mildly offensive to the rest of us, but really fun to watch. Uh, Who doesn't love uh, this kid? The game is in great hands. Uh, Props to Novak for giving us a show. Uh, I didn't see it coming uh, after Roland Garros in knee surgery, making a Grand Slam final uh, with zero practice, zero reps. Uh, 